we have been talking about reciprocity theorem in the previous lecture and solved one example using a reciprocity theorem. The situation that I deal with in reciprocity theorem is where I know the answer in one case and I want to know the answer in the other charge distribution. The theorem says that given the same geometry of conductors, a charge distribution rho 1 which gives rise to potential V 1 d V plus surface term V 1 surface sigma 1 d s is same as integration V 2 rho 1 r d V plus V 2 surface sigma 1 d s. So, it relates the charge distribution and potential in one situation to the other. The example we solved in the previous lecture was taken a conducting sphere and put charge q at a distance d from its center. In this lecture, I will take another example, which we talked about part of it we talked about earlier is that if I take a conducting surface, infinitely large conducting surface, ground it and put a charge q in front of it. We solved this earlier using the image method and found out that the charge induced on the surface becomes exactly minus q and the problem can be solved by putting a charge minus q at the back side, so that the potential on the conductor becomes 0. Now, we ask the question extend the problem and say what if I put another conducting surface infinitely large in front of it. Does it also induce minus q? And this is also grounded, or there is something else. The problem is little difficult because what happens now if I make the situation again? Let us see this. I have this conductor, I have a charge here q, I have this conducting plate again here. This charge will form minus q on the back side and minus q here. These minus q's again will form image plus q plus q and so on and therefore, this becomes a non terminating series. I cannot possibly sum it or use it the method of images to get the charges induced on the two surfaces and this is where method reciprocity theorem will come in very handy. So, we will create two situations one which is the real situation the, the answer the, the one which for which I want to get the answer and the other where I know the answer. So, let us take this conducting surface 1 which is grounded conducting surface 2 which is also grounded take the distance between the two plates to be d and let us take the distance of the charge from one of the plates let us say the left plate to be x 0 and this is charge q and I want to know what are the induced charges on the two plates. Let us take second situation in which I know the answer and that situation will be like this. I will take one plate to still be grounded and give potential v to the other plate. If I give potential v to the other plate then if I measure the distance from here by the time I move distance d the potential has gone down to 0 and the field I know in this case is uniform. Therefore, at a distance x from the surface the potential at x is going to be d minus x times v divided by d. You can see when x is 0 this goes to v, when x is equal to d this goes to 0 and in between it varies linearly. This is going to be my known situation v 2 x is this. What about rho 2? Rho 2 is 0. 
what about sigma 2? There is some sigma 2, so that means there is some positive sigma 2 here, negative sigma 2 here, right, such that sigma 2 is equal to epsilon 0 times field in this situation, which is going to be epsilon 0 v divided by d. You know all this from the capacitor problems you have solved in your 12th grade. Situation 1 is where I want to know sigma 1, this is going to be some other sigma whatever, sigma 1 on the other plate, right. This could be let us call it sigma 1 prime because the two surface charges need not be the same. V 1 x is something, but I certainly know that V 1 x on the surface is 0, because the potential is uh, that the plates are grounded. Rho 1 is equal to Q delta, if you like x minus x naught, delta y minus y naught, delta z minus z naught, if this position is that. Let us also take, so this, this I can write as Q, let us also take the origin to be right here. So, that things become simple. So, y naught z naught is 0, I can write this as delta r minus x naught x. Sigma 1 or sigma 1 prime is what I am interested in. Is the problem statement clear? So, that we have situation 1, which is our real situation, situation 2, which we have created and we, we know the answers in situation 2. Using that, we will find the answer in situation 1. So, to do, do this, I am again going to write V 1 rho 2 d V plus V 1 sigma 2 on the surface d s is going to be equal to V 2 rho 1 d V plus V 2 on the surface sigma 1 d s. V 1 I do not know, but rho 2 certainly is 0. So, this term drops out. V 1 on the surface is 0, this term is 0 and therefore, this entire term also drops out. So, on the left hand side I get 0, which is equal to this should have been V 2. This is equal to V 2, V 2 is V d minus x divided by d rho 1, which is q delta of r minus x naught x d v plus v 2 surface, v 2 on the left surface is v sigma 1, v is constant, sigma 1 d s gives me charge induced on the left surface. On the right hand, right surface, v is 0, so that gives me 0. So, I have written all terms this is equal to v d minus x over d, x will become now x naught because of this delta function times q plus v q 1 and this immediately gives you q 1 equals minus q d minus x 0 over d. So, if I look at this capacitor again, this distance was x 0 and the charge density or q 1 on this is equal to nothing but q the distance from the other plate divided by d with a minus sign. You can similarly show that on this side, on the right side, let me show the right side with a different color on the right side, the charge is going to be q again with a minus sign x naught divided by d. So, this gives you another application of reciprocity theorem, how it can be used effectively to find induced charges in different situations.